joining me in song as I begin the sermon today. You just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you've got to do is call, and I'll be there. James Taylor, Morris. <laughs> it is important to know that you have a patient friend today. A friend that is waiting for you to change your mind, to change your heart, maybe to change your life. And it begins with a basin and a towel. When I was in Turkey, I asked my uh, chaplain assistant if she wanted to get me a gift as my going away. I would love to have a basin and a ewer to go with me for my lifetime. Basically, a pitcher and a basin to pour water into. While I was there, it's the only time I've ever seen it happen, the whole congregation came forward to have their feet washed. Amazing. That next day, Good Friday, I was in the office, it was in Turkey, a Muslim country. I shared this with some of you. I think Iris was one of them. I said, uh, well, she said to me, did I hear right that you washed everybody's feet? And I said, yes, it, it was an amazing celebration of God in the world. And she said, I'm Muslim, and I'm required to wash my husband's feet every day. And then she said, but I refuse. Today, Jesus comes to his disciples, and Peter refuses. He says, I won't allow you to do that for me. And Jesus says something that's profound that has nothing to do with the foot washing. I want to make sure you're clear on that. He says, unless you do this, you have no part of have no part with me. He wants Peter to change his mind and to be served. How often have we been offered help and we've turned it down because of our pride or arrogance or foolishness? Saying, no, 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 rather than saying amen and thank you. Thank you for loving me enough. Jesus wants you to be a part of his vision for this life. He wants you to change and put away your jealousy, your foolishness, your anger, and to come into his presence humbly lovingly, hopefully. When I went to the church in Oscoda, Michigan, it was Hope Lutheran, it's no longer there, which is uh, something that tears up my heart now and again. When I was there, it was a thriving community, a thriving place where God was proclaimed with power. The pastor was Jerry Peterson, and when he invited me, he's one of the reasons I became a pastor, he invited me to be a part of the community and said, John, I'd love you for you to be a teacher in our Sunday school. I said, man, that's awesome. 
what am I going to be doing? Youth ministry, a youth kind of vision? He said, no, no, we have something else for you. I said, okay, what do you got for me? He said, you'll be teaching the preschool. <laughs> uh, he said, but because we can't get anybody to do that. No one wants to be. I said, bring it on. I'm, I'm open for those little pipes. It's going to be great. Right? I know any of you have never done anything with, I think we had 12 little kids in there. It, you know, it's like a madhouse, you know. You know, I, almost every Sunday, John, can you keep their voices down? I said, why? They're having fun. Let them have fun. Well, Monday, Thursday, the Sunday before that, we had Sunday school, and I brought a basin and a towel and a pitcher of water. And I said to the children, I said, hey, would it be all right if I washed your feet? <laughs> yes! I said, really? Yes! We want that! Mr. John, we want that! I said, awesome, awesome. So I said, you can have to take off your feet, or take off your feet, take off your shoes. So they took off their shoes and, you know, their feet were dangling, you know, because the chair was too big. So I had to raise the basin to their feet and they splashed in it and they kicked water on me and they laughed. And they had so much fun. And after I'd washed all of their feet and dried them and they put their shoes back on, I said, now what have I done for you? And they said, well, you washed our feet. And they laughed. And I said, what else? And they said, you know, we got you wet. <laughs> I said, absolutely right. What else? What else? And then we had fun. And then Jenna, the pastor's uh, daughter who was in my class, she came up with that theological construct that I'm going to share with you today. She said, you served us and you loved us. From the mouth of babies, right? You served us and you loved us. How many of you have stopped laughing during this time of COVID? How many of you have stopped looking for the good in others during this time of COVID? How many of you stop thinking about the waters of baptism and just think about the pain, the suffering, and the foolishness of the world? Today, I would ask that you forget maybe your calloused feet and remember those days when you dipped your feet in the waters and you laughed. When you dipped your feet in the water and you got other people wet and laughed about it. I know that some of you like me are older and your feet might be a little bit tired. As we remember this time when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples and called them to a new thought, a new relationship of service and sacrifice. I pray that you too will step up on your feet and laugh, celebrate, rejoice in the knowledge that Christ has come for you and offers himself, not just in the basin and the towel, but on the cross so that you might know God's love. Today we will not have the basin and the towel, and some of you are saying, yippee yi yo kai 
no more about. Give me a yoke, I get it. That's okay. I pray next year COVID will be less of an issue and we'll have an opportunity to dip our waters and dip our feet in the waters of salvation and the hope that Christ brings. Christ is patient. Christ is loving. Maybe you're just not ready. He still waits. He still hopes. 